this video we're going to discuss the Emacs control Q prefix and ASCII control characters. You'll also find out about carrot notation and how they all fit together. Here you can see that Emacs is open and is showing some help documentation for the buffer's mode. You can open the same or a similar buffer by clicking help, describe and describe buffer modes. Don't worry about what the text in the buffer says, that's not why I'm showing this to you. Instead, I want to draw your attention to specific points throughout the buffer where there are parts of the text beginning with a caret symbol and capital letter L. The caret and capital letter are in a different colour to the rest of the text. As you explore Emacs, you may find yourself coming across these weird symbols. What exactly are they? Well, to answer that question, we need to cover a bit of background regarding ASCII control characters. In a couple of minutes, you'll understand exactly what these weird symbols are and their significance. The American Standard Code for Information Interchange, commonly called ASCII, is a character encoding standard. If you follow the standard when encoding your data, it becomes portable across all other computers which understand ASCII. Here, you can see a simple version of a table, representing how decimal numbers from 1 to 127 correspond to specific characters in the ASCII encoding. There are two types of characters in the ASCII table, printable characters and control characters. The characters from number 32 to 126 represent the printable characters. These are intended to be written or printed so that they can be viewed by humans. You can see that they contain letters, digits, punctuation marks and a few other symbols as you would expect. The characters from 0 to 31 and character 127 represent control characters. These are intended to control devices and provide meta information about the data that is encoded. For example, a line feed control character in a text file is commonly used to indicate that there should be a new line at this point, and so that is how it would be displayed in a text editor. The other control characters also have their own purpose. If we head on over to the Wikipedia page for ASCII and navigate to the section on control characters, we can find a much more detailed table than the one we were looking at before. In this table, you can see the decimal number and the name of the character just as before. But now, we also have the binary, octal and hexadecimal number representation for each character. We also have the abbreviation for the control character as it was in 1963, 65 and 67. Additionally, there is a Unicode representation for the character, the caret notation for the character and the shorthand used in C-based languages to refer to the control character. The two main columns which I want you to pay attention to are the octal representation and the caret notation for the control characters. These are important because we will be using them later once we have opened up Emacs and began to explore the control Q prefix. The caret notation is just a useful shorthand for control characters. Each begins with a caret symbol and then is either followed by a capital letter or another symbol. The capital letters used correspond to their position in the alphabet. For example, the start of heading control character has the decimal number of 1, and so its caret representation is the caret symbol followed by the first letter in the alphabet, A. Similarly, since the start of text control character has a decimal number of 2, its caret representation uses the second letter in the alphabet, B. Using the shorthand that the letter of the alphabet corresponds to the decimal number works for the control characters between 1 and 26. The other control characters are given symbols rather than letters. For example, the null control character is given the at symbol after the caret. So now that we understand that caret notation is just a way of symbolizing control characters, we can answer the question, what exactly was the caret L symbol in the Emacs buffer that we saw before? You can see from the table that the caret L symbol is simply the caret notation for the form feed ASCII control character. The form feed character is used to indicate a page break so the caret L symbol is equivalent to the end of a page. A printer would interpret that and print whatever follows from the control character on another page. Other devices and other computer programs would be able to interpret it as well. Now that we've understood the theory behind the caret notation and that it is simply just a way to represent ASCII control characters, we can move on to the control Q prefix in Emacs. The control Q prefix allows you to insert any character, whether it is printable or not, into your buffer. By using the control Q prefix, you can insert control characters or even characters that your keyboard does not support by default. 
There are two main ways in which you can use the Control Q prefix. The first is a convenient way to insert control characters. To insert a control character, you can type Control Q and then Control with the letter or symbol that corresponds to the caret notation for the control character that you want. For example, to insert the control character Null, you can type Control Q, Control At. You can see that this inserted the caret At symbol to represent the control character. You can insert the start of heading control character by typing Control Q, Control A. The start of text control character by typing Control Q, Control B and so on. If you wanted to insert the page break which we saw before in the Emacs help documentation, you could also insert it by typing Control Q, Control L. The second way to use the Control Q prefix is to type Control Q followed by the octal character code for the character you want to insert and then pressing the return key. When entering the character code, you cannot use the numbers on the numpad keys. You need to use the number keys at the top of the main part of your keyboard. This is because the numpad keys send a different signal than the main number keys. So for example, we can insert the null character by pressing Control Q, 0, return. The form feed control character by pressing Control Q, 1, 4, return. This method of insertion is not limited to just control characters. In fact, we can use it to even insert letters. For example, Control Q, 1, 0, 1 will enter the capital letter A. In addition to using the Control Q prefix to enter an octal code point for ASCII characters, you can also use it to enter an octal code point for Unicode characters. For example, Control Q 20254 return inserts the Euro symbol. I actually don't have a Euro key on my keyboard, so this is a way in which I can insert the character into an Emacs buffer. Since it's difficult to remember exactly what the control character is, just from looking at the caret notation, you can put the point over a symbol, for example, over the caret L symbol and type control X equals, you can see that the character has the decimal point 12, the octal code 1, 4 and the hexadecimal code C. It is the 202nd character in the buffer and it is in the third column. For even more information, you can put the point over the character and type control U followed by control X equals. Here, you can also see the control character's name is form feed as expected. You can also see a whole bunch of other information about the character. We've shown how you can enter a character by typing its octal character code after the control Q prefix. Depending on the situation, it may be more convenient to enter a decimal or hexadecimal character code rather than an octal one. We can change the behavior of Emacs to use our own choice of radix for the control Q prefix by opening our .emacs or init.l file and adding some Emacs Lisp. To do this, open your Emacs customization file and add the correct Emacs Lisp expression to set the radix to either octal, which is 8, decimal, which is 10, or hexadecimal, which is 16. Since I want decimal, I'm just going to delete the other lines and close and save the file. Now, whenever you open Emacs, the radix will be set to 10. There you have it. You now understand how the caret notation symbols which appear within Emacs relate to ASCII control characters. These symbols are not exclusive to Emacs, so you may also come across them when dealing with terminals or other programs. If you want to see more helpful tips and tricks on Emacs, be sure to subscribe and check out some of the other videos available on my channel.